Kids Productions. Yeah, it's seven o'clock. Let's live in the building. Hey, money, M's, you ready? Let's go. Welcome to M Street, the hottest podcast. And all that cash and money, M's pockets, it look like thigh pads. He talking trending topics, he ain't no carbon copy. We talking sports, music, and fashion, and other options. To get us out the hood and keep that paper coming And I smoke cones, not backwards, I'm about to blaze an onion These rappers flexing on the gram and they got fake cheddar This intro was provided to you by Flip Mayweather That right, that right Yeetie, yeetie, money else, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? Yeah, Lil Flip in the building Screwed up click Welcome to Elm Street So right now I got a special guest in the house, man. You know, I got my boy, the winner of the Straight Out of Texas competition in Dallas. You know, shout out to my boy Tex out in H Town Hustle Town Network. What's good, baby? You know what I mean? So let me go ahead and introduce, man. So you were the D Town winner from the Straight Out of Texas, man. Give it up for E45. E45, what's the deal, man? What's up, Dallas? Man, I love it out here. I love it. It's my second time here. Oh, the, for real? The first time, true story, I pulled up to uh, Nubia's. Shout out Nubia's, man. Best food down here. Yeah. And I did the show. I jumped back in my car and I took back off. So, like, when I came up here, I literally pulled up to the venue and left. Yeah. But as far as, like, out wandering around and moving around and stuff like that, this is my first time. I got to stay the night out here. Uh, Man, it was tight. Like, so Dallas you... has a nightlife that I just, man, I'm in love with. So, when did you roll into town? Uh, I got here yesterday. I just got here yesterday. Went straight to the studio. Got to work. Shout out to uh, uh, Wesso. Um, doing a track with him and a uh, big boy from Boss Entertainment. So Big Boss Entertainment big was boss. good, baby. Man. So uh, it, it's cool, man. Like, like what I love about Dallas is that, like, it's you go to some cities that are real political. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the do's, the don'ts, the, you know what I'm saying? And over here, it's real simple. Like... Hey, bro, mind you know, mind the way you carry yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like your mannerism, your respect, bro, and everybody's chill. Everybody's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of course, you know you got sharks and you got monsters out here, but like you just, I haven't had a problem with nobody. And I thought, I thought it was different. I thought, you know, it was like, damn, you can't go here, you can't go there. But so far, man, I love Dallas. It's tight out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, can he could hit the instrument? But yeah, man, um, man, we're, we're glad you're here, man. In yeah. the city, representing man. Hard. So Hard. hell yeah, man. So um, let's go ahead and just jump right in it, man. All right, let's get it. You know, and uh, shit. You know, tell my people where you from, man. Man, uh, honestly, is is the part of my rap name? Shout out to Julio Gotos, uh, from GT. Um, is it'll be his birthday tomorrow, and he's actually the one who gave me my rap name, uh, Julio Gotos. I love you, boy. Uh, he. The freeway, Highway 45, it connects Galveston to Houston. Yeah. And uh, it, it's funny, but it's like certain places, like I'm Salvadorian, right? Okay. But I was raised with Mexicans. Yeah, yeah. So like to tell a Mexican, oh, I thought you were Salvadorian. Or if you tell a Salvadorian, oh, I thought you was Mexican. <laughs> yeah. It's like that's a natural insult. That's yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So Galveston and Houston, I love them, but it's two completely different places. One's an island, the other one's a city. Yeah. And uh, it's ironic. If you keep driving, 45 connects Houston to Dallas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I took off from Houston. I drove like 200 some miles and it was like right off the freeway. Bam. Uh, you're in Pleasant Grove, like right here. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's ironic to me that it's a highway, you know, where I got my rap name from. But really, like when I, when I, when I rap, whenever I write down my music and mm. my bars, I think about like the whole Spanish race. I think about like, I make smoke music. So I think about everybody that fires up a blunt. And, and like some people think that like to get high, you're like to sit at home and watching cartoons climb out of the TV and try to get you like how you see it in the te like in the movies. Yeah. But there's some people that really go through a lot of stuff uh, like mentally, emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what I'm saying? Like it helps. So I'm a big advocate. Shout out to Cookies right here behind me. Yeah. Uh, Stizzy's Jungle Boys. Cannibalism products, I, like I stand behind like real clean weed, healthy yeah. weed for people, 
and I make smoke music. So whenever I go to make my music, it's not like I'm just thinking about the people from my block, the people from my city, not even the people from my state. Like I, I have it in my head that like I want to be in Brazil and Prague and like I want to go all over the world and like really really show people like look mm -hmm. something that started like in a time era like pe I'm 35 years old yeah rapping's a young man's thing you know what I'm saying I hit so up the so are you originally from the H no no uh, originally I was born in New Jersey New Jersey I was born in New Jersey shout out to everybody in New Jersey I got family in, in uh, Connecticut Long Island New York all of that um, I was born in New Jersey. Uh, we moved to El Salvador. Uh, oh shit! Gotera El Salvador. Uh, the way I speak Spanish, there's a the thing. If you're from Texas and you're Hispanic, you live so close to the border that yeah. it's like you Mexican. <laughs> if yeah. you speak Spanish, if your last name is anything that sounds Spanish, like you're automatically Mexican. Yeah. But in New Jersey, it's like right across from New York, right? Mm -hmm. So there's like Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Peruvians. There's like every race of Spanish you can imagine. So I was born in New Jersey. So like my palate of food, I love Cuban food. I love Puerto Rican food. Yeah. El Español, lo hablo diferente con un acento. Yeah. Most people hear me speak Spanish and they're like, you're Puerto Rican or you're Dominican. Yeah. But my mom, she was real big on like, you can't just be Hispanic. You actually have to know how to speak Spanish, how to read it, how mm -hmm. to write it. And and I thank God for her, you know what I'm saying, for for that for her having that in her. Mm -hmm. And at the time in New Jersey, she would have a Dominican lady take care of us. So she was like, look, y'all teach them how to speak here. And then when they go to school, I'm going to put them in classes with like the white kids and they'll learn how to speak English. Yeah. So my first language was Spanish and I was taught how to speak by a Dominican lady. So even though I'm Salvadoran, I don't sound Salvadoran. And then by the time I came to Texas, mm -hmm. I was raised with Mexicans. I found out what a torta was. I yeah. found out like what fajita meat was. Yeah. So I was like Ramon Ayala and fucking yeah. like gritos. And yeah. So like I fell in love with the whole Mexican culture. I remember watching Blood In, Blood Out, Boulevard Nights. I remember watching these movies and yeah. instantly falling in love. Like like just falling in love with like what they stood for, how they carried themselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And uh, so my my music is kind of weird because it's it's from kind of all over, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I might be jamming country music and that might inspire some- Different cultures, like exactly, a little gumbo mix. Exactly, exactly. And um, I, I love I love the fact that I'm big on respect, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've told people all the time, I may never make it to sell a million records. I might not make it to the whole world knows me, but whenever I put the mic down, people respect what I said on it. They respect mm -hmm. like where I came from and like the people that helped me get here. Like that's what I do it for more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. I got to do it for the homeboys and like I talk to my big homies every day on the phone. Like before I even what I'm gonna do a song about, they listen to the the records before I decide if I'm gonna put them out or not. And their opinion matters so much to me because it's like their their help. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. like their their guidance. I'm sitting here instead of a TDC block talking about bro this song nigga I would have I would have went yeah. platinum you know what I'm saying and yeah. and and it and it's because of people you know detrimental to to what happened that I'll never forget the big homies you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah. so every time I rap I think about a long list of people so it's not just hey I, I don't want to make myself look crazy but I don't want like you know whenever you go to like high school or something like that yeah and you go like a basketball game a football game mm. and there's a scoreboard right yeah. The the opposing team, the opposing team, it always says visitor, mm -hmm. right? But if you went to where you grew up and that's your school and that, what does it say? Home, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I represent the homeboys, the hometown, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, so like, it's funny to me that like all my friends and everything like that, my whole life, they've been telling me, bro, you need to keep on with this rap. You need to, and there's been yeah. 10 year periods where I just put it down, didn't want to touch it. Yeah. And the whole time it was homeboys like, bro, like, man, just try it again, try it again, try it again. So when did you get, you know, I guess, fell in love with music or you knew that's what you wanted to do? Man, I'll be honest with you, Central Middle School. Shout out to Galveston Island. Uh, like I said, I moved around a lot as a kid. But whenever we moved to Galveston in Central Middle School, um, you know, everybody, everybody's different wherever they so go. So it was from uh, straight from New Jersey and straight to New Galveston. Jersey to living in El Salvador. After El Salvador uh, coming, uh, my mom came to visit her sister during the winter, yeah. right? And in New Jersey, there's like five feet of snow and that's normal. Mm -hmm. So we have asthma, we have respiratory issues, all type of stuff. Yeah. My mom comes down here like in the dead smack middle of winter and it's like 80 degrees. It's like 75 degrees. 
So she never goes back. She just sends for us to, to straight move down here. Yeah. So we moved down here right around the time like I was going into middle school. So like and, and like I was saying, like I grew up in that era where like colors, you know what I'm saying, mm. Scarface and all yeah. these casino, all these kids watch these movies and yeah. it's like, bro, I wanna be Robert De Niro. I wanna be, you know what I'm saying, da da da. So everybody wanna be a thug, everybody wanna be a gangster. That's just the era I came up in. So everybody, like I said, everywhere you go, there, there's you know, there's rules and regulations, things like that. So like where we were, it was funny because like like we we had like goats and chickens and like yeah bro like my dad he's real Salvadoran like yeah. and this is his way of having El Salvador with him he cultivates his own his own his own food he has his own eggs from his own chickens he oh, gets shit. milk from his dairy goats so you can imagine like just imagine getting on a school bus right <laughs> yeah and like. You're the easiest, your mama jokes, because like, bro, you got goats, you got chickens. So like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and and it was just funny to me that like, I always, I always felt like if you're going to rap, it was, I'm not, and I'm trying to not make it racial or nothing, but it was like more black people rap, like where in the middle school I was at, in central middle school. Mm -hmm. So it was almost like, if you're going to rap, you have to go harder than everybody. If not, then just stay out of it. Cause this kind of ain't even for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, 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 my, my son's godfather, Sammy Johnson, I love you, rest in peace. Um, he's the one that saw it in me where he's like, you're just a natural competitor. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. if right now me and you decide to play marbles, I'm going to try to bing your shit from across the room. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? We play tic-tac-toe, I'm going to try to, you know, no matter what it is, I'm competitive. Yeah. So it was in central middle school. I remember they would be banging on, on the lunch tables. They be banging on the lockers after school. They would even be banging on cars. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Frank from Parkland. Uh, he be sitting there making beats with his pencil. And it was like, hey, if you got bars, you know what I'm saying? Nobody cares unless you could do it right here in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. There's no, There was no go to the studio, record it, bring, <laughs> yeah. drop the video. It was no. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it right here in front of everybody. And it was right there where I fell in love with the attention of it. Like, I'm an exhibitionist. I'm an entertainer. Like, I love being watched. And, mm -hmm. and like, this is something I've learned about myself. So whenever I would say a line where everybody like, ooh, or we're like, whoever was rapping would be like, bro, I don't even want to rap no more because that, damn, he just tore that shit up. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with it. You know what I'm saying? It was right around the time where I started shooting pool too. I shoot pool like competitively. Shout out to uh, CJ's Billiards out here. But I was out there last night. That's one of the coolest shit. spots. And, and man, if y'all come to Dallas, go check that out. Um, it was tight. It was real laid back, real good equipment. And like everywhere I go, people are like, hey, bro, there's a strip club. Uh, there's a trap house they're throwing a party at. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody's baby mama's over here, you know. Da -da -da. And I'm like, bro, if you could find me a pool hall, like, I'm in love. Like, like that. Like that's where I want to be. Whenever I got my downtime, I just want to find a pool hall. And mm -hmm. if we could play for a little change, then even better. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? So it, it was tight. It was real. Like, like I told you, this was the first time I got to like wander off. And like when I go places, I ain't, I'm not on no big headed macho shit, but I pray a lot. And in my prayer, I'm like, look, whatever's supposed to happen, it's just going to happen. So I can't come to Dallas, San Antonio, New York, California. I can't come with a fear of, hey, I can't go there. I can't go here. It's like if God tells me to go that way, I'm going to go that way. And whatever's supposed to happen is going to happen. Because mm. I feel like with God, I could walk blindfolded. He ain't going to let me step where he didn't plan for me to walk. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So whenever I come out, I like going out by myself. Because sometimes dudes walk around with a big ass crowd, but now you're now you're responsible for every every mood swing, mm -hmm. every every dude with you. You know what I'm saying? Like you're somebody with you might fuck around, pop something off, mm -hmm. and now you're jammed up. But because it's your face and your name all over the flyers, you know what I'm saying? Don't take a rocket science to be like, okay, so you're gonna be at this club for this show. You know what I'm saying? So I try my best to to just show everybody love, show everybody respect. And and for the most part, try to put it to the youngsters, bro. Like you ain't gotta walk around with your chest poked out. You ain't gotta walk around stepping on people's toes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you could walk around, be humble, chill, and ain't nobody trying to, you know, check nobody or get crazy or nothing like that. Most people just want to make money and go home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like I hear most kids be like, oh, I want to be a boss. You think a boss wants to get a lawyer to fight a case? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, he's yeah. trying to figure out how to stay legit and out of trouble. So. You gotta be. You gotta go around what you want to be like because it's like nature. You become what you're around, or what you're around becomes like you. If I sit in this room long enough, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pick up your slang, or you're gonna pick up mine. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to be a bum, go chill around some bums. You want to be a boss, go find you some boss and catch game. 
And that's really how I feel about life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. the music is just to get people's attention. But really, I'm trying to sell you a puppy. I'm trying to sell you. <laughs> Me and my mom, we got a catering business. We be making like 80, 90 pounds of fajita in one day. Yeah, so you were telling me earlier when it was, we was talking, he said that you you dabble in here, there, oh, yeah. a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I, I guess let me know some of the things that, uh, well, well, not me, well, let the okay. public know. All right, um, like, well, big shout out to East Bullies. East Bullies, that's basically my, my turning point. Uh, shout out to my big homie, you know who you are, uh, I love you. Um, basically what happened was, you know, it's all public information, so I ain't tripping. I got jammed up on a dope case in 2014, and from 13 years old, mm. I was paying rent in the trap house. Big E, what's up? Um, and it's like right there, from then to 28 years old, I always had a job, but I was always dibbling and dabbling. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all I knew. So when I got jammed up, um, I told my partner, I was like, look, man, like, I really don't feel like I could go work at Walmart or McDonald's. And I'm nothing, I'm not I'm not shitting on that. If that's yeah. where you work, I salute you, get your money. But like, I really have like, you know what I'm saying? Like mental issues to where like, I don't like being around people, you know what I'm saying? That I don't really fuck with. And then I start feeling weird. So like, and all my big homies know this. So my big homie was like, hey, look, um, have you ever thought about breeding dogs? And I was like, man, like, bro, I don't even have a goldfish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and it's crazy because if you rewind this conversation yeah. we just had, what I tell you, my dad had goats, cows. So like, it's crazy. But in my subconscious, I was already taught how to tend the animals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, nah, I never thought about breeding dogs. And he was like, bro, if you could sell dope, you could sell dogs. And I was like, I was like, man, look, I'll give it a try, bro. Like, if I'm over here driving from all over the state, like just to you know, drive a flatbed truck just mm -hmm. to make a paycheck, I'll try whatever you think is a good idea. So, uh, sure enough, on the first litter, I make nineteen thousand dollars off the first litter. The second litter, uh, and I'm not, and I'm not one of these numbers guys. Like my mom, my son, they both make, you know, they eat off this East Bullies, which is my biggest pride because I want everybody around me to be good. Mm -hmm. And bro, like the first litter happened and I literally quit my job. I was driving limos for seven years, like opening doors, sir, ma'am, your funerals, birthday parties, anniversaries, you name it, I drove it. Yeah. And I had one litter and I was able to quit my job and thank God, I pray every day, but thank God I'm able to wake up and I work with my family. I work with my dad, I work with my mom and my son and I might not be a millionaire, but like, it's just so prideful to know that like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not at Target. I'm not at Walmart where yeah. like somebody's standing behind me, you know, da 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 da. And and if that's where you're at, hey, I respect you. I salute you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want everybody to win. Yeah. And and that's something I, I found out that like if you're around negative people, even if you yourself you're not negative, eventually that's gonna spill over to you. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be around somebody that's gonna be like, hey, you saw that dude, man. Fuck that. Dude. I want to be around somebody that's gonna be like, hey, bro, you know, like, let's open a business. Like, mm -hmm. you know, how can we invest some money? You know, like the 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 realest investment uh, 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 advice that someone gave me is that most people, they get on their treadmill. Their treadmills, you get up and work Monday through Friday. As long as you're working, you cover your overhead. Everybody in this room, their overhead is different. Your insurance, your, your bills, your whatever. Yeah, yeah. So most people that get on their treadmill, they celebrate because they're like, oh, shit, my treadmill works. Mm -hmm. If I go to work, everything's getting paid. Yeah. And that's where they messed up. Because your treadmill doesn't work until you could step off of it and it's still moving. That's when you have LLCs. That's when you have uh, residual income. That's when you have rental properties. You know what I'm saying? Now you're not just covering your overhead. Now you're making the money to reinvest, to keep, to moving up, to progress. Yeah. Some people get comfortable. Like I talked to one dude, I swear, he was like, bro, you know, like, like I be paying my phone bill and buy, I, I stopped listening right there because I was <laughs> like, if you think paying a cell phone bill is like, a, like, look, look at this business. It's a beautiful business. I'm sure you have a house and a car and everything else. You know the stresses of, hey, bro, I have to cover the overhead, you know, da, da, da. And so, like, I feel like some people don't have that mindset. Some people are like, bro, like, if I live in the back of my mom's house and I don't have to pay a house, like, why would I go get a house? And some people are like, no, I need a house so that da 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 Yeah, yeah. So that I love being around people who are like, like when I came here, I was so quick to compliment you. I went to a barbershop earlier. I couldn't stop complimenting them. They had like a honeycomb thing on the ceiling. Yeah. The, the, they had a pool table in the middle of it. And it was a young Mexicano. He was like, he was like 25, 26 years old. 
badass barbershop, bro. It felt like a club. It, like I when I when I went on my social, yeah, I was like, man, this place it feels like a boutique. What like was getting that? a haircut. Uh man, I like I don't want to mispronounce their name like that. I, I'll make sure to shout them out. Uh, man, I, I, like I said, I don't want to guess and disrespect like that what they part have of a name. Was it? Um, Eagles something. Uh, Raul from Big Boss. I got a haircut. Oh, okay. They donated a haircut as part of as part of the the package. Oh, okay, so they were they were part of the the whole. Uh, yeah, and okay. then when I went there, it was like. I saw these young dudes. I was like, man, this must be like the school or something. Cause like they're all hella young. Yeah. So I, in my head, I couldn't believe that these were all barbers. Like I'm used to like the, the veteranos, old schools and yeah, yeah. all young, super young. And so like I'm sitting there and they start listening to my music and they're liking it. And I just did a song, that song that I told you I was doing. So I was like, hey, when I come back up here, we need locations for a video. And like, man, they got like these gold chairs, like gold plated chairs. It's like them old school, like barber chairs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I love props like that because they're different. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, man, you think we shoot a video here? And, da, da, da. and he was like, yeah. I said, man, I, I got to ask the owner. And the dude's like, bro, I am the owner. And bro's like 24, 25. Wow. I'm 35. And I'm like, bro has a commercial building with like eight booths. There's eight people in here cutting hair. Yeah. And he's like 20 something and everybody's in there in their twenties. They're all they're all Mexicanos. I was so proud, bro. Like I I I I don't know if it's that I'm getting old or I don't know if it's a midlife crisis or I don't know what it is. But like I get so happy when I see like when I see somebody that's Spanish or somebody a minority, like, you know what I'm saying, that's actually doing, making a change. Mm -hmm. Anyone can sit at home and be like, man, I would have done this, I would have done that. But to like actually put on your shoes and make it a mission to like no, I'm going to do something about yeah. it. I'm going to open my own business. I'm going to get people to spend their money with me. You know, da, da, da. like I'm, I'm coming out with a clothing line soon. And it's I've never learned until right now how important it is to brand yourself. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like, and, and all these all these little things that I picked up along the way, I never knew that I would need them. And now that I'm like starting to walk into certain situations, I'm like, oh, OK. Like I used to work as an attorney's clerk. I never thought in a million years that the you know contracts and legalities and this I'd have never thought that that was gonna be like a thing. Mm. And here I am, and I'm like, I have yet to sign a record deal. I have no record deal. I have no manager. I, I have a distribution deal through GT that 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 uh, goes through Empire. So big shout out to Gazi Empire, love y'all. So they they release my music to iTunes, Spotify, and da da da. But as far as a record deal or management deal. Mm. Uh, I'm signing myself. So that my next project, I'm dropping like 30 songs and it's literally called Signed to Myself. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm no longer looking for a record deal. Now, uh, if you want to work with me, you're going to work with me as an equal business entity. E45, I'm not looking for a record deal. I'm looking for collaborative projects. So now all of a sudden, all this business that I learned on the way here, now it's like, okay, well, this is how we're going to run it. Whereas opposed to like, you know, when I was, when I was 14, shout out Big Mac, when I was 14, bro, I booked the studio for four hours and I recorded 18 songs. Damn. It was two tracks. It was one, then ad libs, then go to the next beat. One, I didn't know that the verses were separate. I didn't know that the hook, I, I just literally went in there and true story, you can look him up, mm -hmm. he's from Galveston. You can ask him. I recorded 18 songs mm -hmm. in four hours and I didn't take a notepad. I took a CD of beats. And I just let them play the beat, and I just on every beat just said something different. I mean, I don't know if they went hard or not. You know, I was 14, 15, but yeah, just that ethic. It was in me from jump where it was like, I want to do this, and I want to. I don't just want to do it. I want to be like. There's a difference between being good and being scary good, because scary good that intimidates the people that are good. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So whether I'm rapping, whether I'm shooting pool, whatever I'm doing, I feel like if it's an interpretation to me. I want it to be what I what I have it, you know what I'm saying, pictured out in my head the way I want it. Yeah. So everything from like my animals, I love, I love bragging about my animals. I love bragging about my friends and their accomplishments. Cause like I said, you know, it's it's the vibe that you put out. Yeah. That's what's gonna come back. So other than bullies, what what other animals do you uh, I have Frenchies, I have bullies, bulldogs, I have hybrids, which hybrids are a mix of all three. The thickness of a bulldog, the body of a bully, the punch and snout, and the ears of a Frenchie. Oh, so shit. yeah, no, like I man, I love my dogs, and uh, we have we have our 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 cows. Of dogs oh shit. yeah, no nah, man, B big shout out to uh, Rumble in the Jungle in Dallas, Apocalypto in Nebraska. These are like these are different dog shows that have mm -hmm. had crowds of fifteen thousand, wow. ten thousand people, 
You know what I'm saying? And, and so, like, if you're not into certain things, you don't really think, like, oh, there's a market for it or there's a pool of people that will spend their money for yeah. that. And then you you go to these festivals. Uh, shout out to uh, Sanders, D. Sanders. He invited me to the Burning Trees Festival in L.A. Me, myself, I'm from Texas. So, but it's still illegal here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So when you go over there and they're hitting dabs in front of a state trooper, like, nigga, I'm sitting there nervous. <laughs> as, I don't know if it's the weed. I don't know if I'm paranoid, but I'm yeah. like, nah, nigga, I'm good. I don't want to hit that nigga. There's a lot right there. Um, but so I go out to L.A., bro. There's 10,000 people. Right, I have never been to a festival like this. This mm. is this is almost like like a celebration of weed. Nigga. So I'm like, I've never been to nothing like this. I'm like a little kid. I'm walking around like, damn. So at the end of the festival, uh, D. Sanders he invited me to go out there. He gave me an all access pass. I uh, I met Too Short, Corrupt, Big Boy, like all these huge names in California. Mm. I met there, and so at the end of it, I'm like, bro, this is the biggest thing I've ever been to. You know what I'm saying? Like I've never seen as many people. And he's like, bro, last last month we did it in Vegas and had 81,000 people. Damn. And the fact that like he's willing to play my music and he's willing to help me out to promote and push my brand and what I'm trying to do, um, I just feel blessed. You know what I'm saying? Like from this right here uh, to coming out to Dallas to, to, to get so much love from a city that I've never been to. You know what I'm saying? And, and like I haven't even went on stage yet. And I can't wait for the moment I get off stage. That's my favorite thing. Some people think that it's the performance. To me, it's when I get off stage and I get to shake hands. And I and the people that literally just walk by me at the venue, they're like, damn, that was you? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like I said, I've, I've wrote over 300 songs in 10 years and never recorded one. I have an email right now that has 300 songs that I've never recorded. Wow. And um, shout out to Simes Carter in Colorado. He has that song, Oh No, Him and Creeper. Mm. Uh, it's on TikTok. They played it during the Super Bowl. The song streams a million times every 24 hours. Wow. And he was kind enough to invite me to his house. Uh, he made five beats for me. And uh, I recorded five songs. And it was crazy because I, I was recording one song, I remember. And they were not in their head. They were like, damn, that goes hard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a song by my mom. And uh, so after the song, I was like, man, you want to see something crazy? He was like, what's up? I turned my phone and the lyrics, it was in an email. And the lyrics were from 2008. Wow. And I just recorded it la like last year. And like they were fucking with it. They were nodding their heads. There was, you know what I'm saying? So I got, I got a, I, it's like I have a whole tank of songs that I could just go get whenever I want. And I love writing. It's like, it's like a workout. How mm -hmm. some people wake up and do a workout. Like sometimes I'll write three songs in one day about three different topics just to see, hey, can you write to this? Mm -hmm. Can you write without cussing? Can you do an RB song? Can you rap in Spanish? Can you da 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 da? I like challenging myself because I I knew that this was gonna come at some point. Yeah. I was just getting ready for it. So how how long you say you've been rapping? Like over uh, some years. Let me see. It. Like this is crazy because I'm a numbers person. I've been rapping since I was um, since I was about twelve, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thirty five, so that's twenty three years, right? Uh, the number twenty three has always popped up in my life, like always. I have three siblings. I have three kids. Like it, it's it's always popped up. And so I started rapping when I was like 12. I'm in it right now, uh, going on 23 years, and I've never had this much momentum. I've never had this much attention. I've never had this many people cheering me on. Mm -hmm. And you know what year we're in? What? You know what year we're in? Yeah. 2022. Yeah. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that even if I don't blow up, I guarantee you to come back here in 2023 and tell you, hey, from when I was sitting on that couch, yeah. Da 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 da. Like, and I firmly believe that because I feel like if you put your arm to something, then you already won. Yeah. If you if you genuinely have people that want you to win, you already won. And there's people that legit, they're like, um, I I, I give away my music. I drop a mixtape and I I'm like, hey, just listen to it. It's cool. I'll accept yeah, yeah, donations, yeah. but you can have it. And for like for people that work graveyard shifts, you know who you are. I'm not gonna put your name out there. Um and someone donated fifty dollars, bro, for fi fifteen songs, and they sent me fifty dollars, and I was like, "What? What the hell? Like, you know, like, nah, this is too much." They're like, "Nah, bro, like, keep going to the studio, like, you know, use it for gas to travel, but man, keep doing your thing, like, like, and and for me to know, like, then, like, it's a graveyard shift, so you're busting your ass working while the whole world's asleep, and you shot me that money so that like I could keep my dream going." 
Like to me, that that fifty bucks might have been worth might have been worth fifty million. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just humbled me. Like it's it almost made me feel like, damn, you believe in me more than I do. And so it's, it's little things like that along the way where I feel like breadcrumbs. Like I just put certain things and certain people in my life for certain reasons, and I don't even understand it when I meet them. And then like years down the line, I'm like, oh shit, like damn, that's crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's dope. Like I appreciate you, man. I, I appreciate you for like. Listening to my music, you know, some people they get a little success and they're hard to talk to because you know what I'm saying they grow that 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 ego thing in their head. But when we when you called me earlier, we had a whole thirty minute conversation on the phone, going back and forth, talking just like this. Yeah. And and I appreciate you for that, man. Like oh, sincerely, yeah. I thank you for that because, like I said, some people you don't know how they are. You yeah. gotta you gotta meet them and vibe with them. But even just from talking to you on the phone, I really felt like you're trying to like. You're trying to do something good for the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. like this whole thing it isn't just to get numbers and streams. It's to like, hey, Elm Street, for example, that's that's you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it'd be different if it was like you trying to put a gold chain. Everybody has gold chains or a car. You know what I'm saying? It's you. In any business, there's three Ps. People, product, and profit. You got to find a product to sell people to make a profit from. So you've already made yourself a product, and now you got people paying attention. The money's coming. You feel me? Yeah. So so I fuck I fuck with that you know what I'm saying like I pay attention to detail I, I I love learning business if I don't know it I want to learn it so whenever I come around stuff like this and I'm like wow you know what I'm saying like old boy sitting right here he ain't said a word and that's and that's a dude that owns the whole thing you know yeah, like yeah. that to me that's super dope like I always wanted to be in front of the camera but it, I never took time to think like how do you make money behind the camera you know what I'm saying yeah. who, who does that and come to find out it's the people you don't see that make the most money <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how did you uh, link up with uh, Burner and Cookies? Man, uh, Goto's, Goto's. Uh, they all grew up together in the Bay. Mm. Uh, so, uh, Burner, big shout out to Burner, man, bro. Like he's the most humble dude. He's on the cover of Forbes. Oh yeah. He's on the cover of Forbes right now. They offered him four hundred million for his company, and he said no. Like, like that, like. You gotta go to sleep, like really feeling yourself. You like, I just said no to four hundred mil, and uh, so when I met him, I met him at the House of Blues in Houston backstage, yeah. and uh, again, you don't know how you're gonna, you know, you don't know how people are gonna take you, and I just wanted to rap for him. I just wanted him, for him to hear me rap, and so like when I'm when as I'm going up to him, I'm like, oh shit, like I don't know how to like start the conversation where like I'm a rap, and he's like, he looks at me, he's like, hey, you're you're E forty five, right? And I was like. Yeah, he was like, oh, Julio told me about you. What's up, man? And it was like, oh, shit. Like, I don't even have to rap for you. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. And he, he ended up being cool as hell, man. I'm so, like, uh, Aaron Springs, he has a tattoo shop. Just another friend that, that I like. I like bragging about my friends. He reminds me of Burner. Because uh, when you pay attention to Burner's story, it's almost like he did what Starbucks did. He did what Chick-fil-A did. You know what I'm saying? He didn't just open a store, and that wasn't enough. He opened a chain of stores across the country. Now, damn, they're opening a different, you know what I'm saying? Like, in other countries now. Yeah. And so, like, that's what I meant when I told you earlier. Like, I've just been humbled to meet these people. And he actually sat there and, like, he talked to me that night. I was like, hey, bro, you, you know, you should, you know, try this and think about that. The legalities of, like, BMI and ASCAP. Like, he didn't have to tell me all that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But but he just, like, little, it was like it was like a few minutes. It wasn't like I sat there all night, like, chopping it up with him. Mm -hmm. But he gave me enough game right there to, like, he for me to know, like, hey, you ain't have to do that. And so, like, now whenever I go anywhere out of town, if there's a cookie store, I just go in there and they put my name in their system where they just run my name and it's like, all right, cool, you know what I'm saying? So I love. So so I I you know what I'm saying? I I put it down for them hard in my music videos. Um they they you know what I'm saying? And they got some loud loud trees so oh, shit, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's your thing. So yeah, a, a, a affiliation or uh no, nah, like as far as like contracts and all that. No, no, no. It's it's just like like for example, Goto's. Uh I met him through Lucky Luciano. I made a song, HTX, shout out to Lucky and all the Christian music he's putting out. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, big shout out to the Christian music. If if you need to go to church, go get your mind right. Um, at the time, Lucky wasn't doing uh, Christian music. Mm -hmm. At the time, it was Lucky Luciano. So I put out a song called HTX, and I had no clue how to get a hold of these people, right? So I, so I go, I start going to their like like their pages. And I noticed that if you try to like send a message, you're like one of a million people. If you try to put a comment, you're like one of a thousand people. So I, I was trying to figure out like, how do I get them to hear my music? 
And so I, I look and it says booking info. <laughs> so that's their money. Like when you when you when you hit this, that's like, hey, look, I'm gonna pay you to go do this. So I would hit up their booking info and I would just send them my music. Like it didn't even like instantly. I was like, if you don't listen to it, fine, whatever. If you do, then maybe I'll hear something back. So I sent it to Swisher House. I sent it to Rap a lot. I sent it to Dope House Records. I sent it to Shut Them Down. I sent it to everybody I grew up listening to. And I get an email back. Lucky Luciano. And he's like, bro, I like that song. Can I jump on it? I was like, bro, like, can you jump on it? Hell yeah. And he ends up getting on the song. It's on YouTube. It's called wow. HTX. And so when he takes the song to show it to his manager, Julio Gotos, Gotos like, man, that's tight. Who's that other cat? And that's how I crossed paths with Gotos uh, going on nine years ago. Mm -hmm. That was nine years ago. I just signed my distribution deal four, four months ago. So for the whole nine years, it's been like, it's been a homeboy relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like I, when I say I love him, it's like literally he's pulled me out of like a lot of shit mentally and emotionally. Mm. He done flew me out to California just so I could have somewhere to cry and not break down in front of my family and shit. So um, it, it's so much more than music, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like, like my love for him. And he kind of got me in the door with with uh, with Baby Bash. He got me in the door with Burner. He, man, he got me in the door with everybody in New York, everybody in California. Um, I'm just lucky. It's like I tell him all the time. There's so many goldfishes in the world that they give them away at the state fair. And you go to Walmart and pick what color you want. But it's 100% legal if you try to go get a great white shark. You know what I'm saying? Because they're so extinct, they hardly even like they're hardly even there. Mm -hmm. And to in a metaphoric way, I feel like a goldfish. But somehow, some way, I've been able to find these great white sharks that are like, bro, swim with me. Come on. So like go toes, I love you. You know what I'm saying? He's an artist development. You go to him when you have millions of people and millions of streams and millions, and me with no name, with no nothing, bro, like then let me into his house to have dinner with his family. Like uh, he, you know, sat down and ate with my kids. My kids know him personally. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, so um, you know, big shout out to Go Toast. Happy birthday! He'll be 50 tomorrow. You know, earlier he was in an all white suit and a Rolls Royce, and I was just like, man, like it's just it's just crazy to me that like that's my homeboy, and I'm so proud. Like like you have two type of friends. They'll be walking with you like on a sidewalk, right? Mm -hmm. And like there's a pile of dog shit a few a few feet up. There's two type of friends. The first one, he's going to pull out his phone and start walking slow and turn on his camera and be like, oh, I'm about, to, oh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get him. The second one is going to, is going to like put his arm out and say, hey, bro, hey, like watch that right there. You know what I'm saying? Step aside. Yeah. So you got friends that want you to crash because it entertains them. Yeah. And you got people that legit want you to stay on the road because they want to see you win. And I feel like that's who that's been to me. He's been wanting me to win this whole time. Well, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? So I feel lucky to to know him, Burner, mm -hmm. um, you know, so many other people. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I come from a place where, like, there's do's and don'ts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's certain people, as much as I love, like, I talk to them behind cameras and all that. Like, I ain't, I ain't down to put their names and shit like that because you know how it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So certain people just to protect them. Like, I love you. You know who you are, T. I love you, nigga. But I, you know, about as far as like putting all the information out there like that, you gotta be careful nowadays, for oh, real. Yeah, yeah. People get jammed up over AR kind of shit nowadays. Oh, yeah, especially so, with these phones nowadays, you know what I mean? Delete, delete <laughs> everything. I just like, yeah, nah. quick to press that record button. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just always gotta be, uh, be careful out there, you know what I mean? Watch your surroundings and shit. Yeah, I just did a, I did a suicide prevention song. Is uh, like, and I wanted to help so, so, so bad. Like I wanted to help that I was gonna put my information at the end of the song. Oh, I wanted to put my cell phone number. I just, like, I wanted people to know like, hey bro, you, you know, there's other ways, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and then my big homie was like, hey bro, like that probably ain't a good idea. You know what I'm saying? Cause when someone's going through like the deepest part of that, it has to be a trained professional to talk to them, to know how to handle them. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so the song that I put out, I uh I go into detail about my overdose. I swallowed sixty pills. It was a day that I discharged from a from a psych ward, uh, Rosemary Ceiling in Galveston. And for the longest of time, this was something I wouldn't talk about because it was like, nah, I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. It was like, hey, the world don't need to know about that. And uh, it wasn't until somebody told me they were like, uh, man, I was gonna go to your show, and uh, like I just want to see you. Like I just want to meet you. And like. 
like your life seems so cool, you know. Yeah. And uh, I've suffered. I've suffered from a lot of down to like self mutilating myself, and that's something that this is the first time on camera that I'm talking about it. But it's because I just did this song, and this song, um, it turned when I first recorded it. I remember it was the most painful thing I ever wrote. Like literally, my tears were hitting the screen of the phone while I was typing it, mm. but I couldn't backspace to fix the grammar because it was just flowing out of me. And in the song, I'm basically talking to my my daughter, my son, and my mom, and I'm going into like what got me there, what got me to that feeling. But the whole point of the song isn't to instigate or push somebody to do it; it's to prove to them, like, hey, look, I was in those rubber rooms. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was on the Zoloft and Paxil, and I got my stomach pumped, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I went through all that, mm. and somehow, some way, God blessed me to be able to learn how to put my left foot in front of my right one, and 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 to wake up. And to make it to the end of the day to get back in bed and do it all over again. Yeah. So I, 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 so the video, it's um, it's gonna be a video with me, my son, my other, uh, my two sons, my daughter, and my mom. It's gonna be the most personal video I've ever shot in my life. Um, it's gonna be real graphical, and the whole point of it isn't to get attention. It's not to get streams. The whole point of it is to let whoever know that that's going through that. Like, bro, like, there's other ways to deal with it. There's other options. Like, shit, you know, there's people you could reach out to. Mm -hmm. And I hope and I pray to God, like, like I really hope and pray to God that I get testimonials from this song, from people like, hey, bro, I was going through this. And when you said that one line, like, one line, it says, uh, I know I'm dead wrong inside of self-hate, so I hide from the world while I self-mutilate. And, like, that's something that I want people to know. Like, don't be embarrassed of that. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel don't feel that that makes you different. You know what I'm saying? Inside of everybody's head, there's a whole world. Mm -hmm. And inside of his, yours, hers, like inside of everybody you come across, they have a whole world inside of their head. And sometimes you never know what someone can mask with a smile. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You think you're talking to the most, like, that's why one of the tattoos I'm going to get is like a clown wearing lokes, just crying. Because mm -hmm. it's like... I've always been that, like the class clown. I can make everybody laugh, but if I explain to you my pain, I could probably have everybody crying while they're laughing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, so um, the song, I'm so 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 excited about it. I'm excited about the video. When's I've never put my children in the in, in, in a video ever ever mm -hmm. ever. Um, it's called Dear Mom. It, it's um, you have the, a date when it's dropping. I don't. Because uh, I signed a, well, I didn't sign. It's it's a verbal agreement, but like it's going really, really good. Shout out to Connor from uh, uh, Ring of Fire Productions yeah. in Houston. Uh, super cold with the camera, bro. Like he shoots like commercials, like like that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I met him on stage at a show that I wasn't even supposed to perform at. Like I I, I would just happen to be on stage because the DJ told me to go up yeah. there. And he was the head of production. His company, his company, another youngster. He had the whole, like, he had his people filming the thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was the owner of the company. So he's like, bro, uh, man, get my number. He hadn't heard my music. I'm like, all right, cool. I got his number because I saw he had a camera. So I was like, damn, bro, like, that's throw. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. And we, we got on the phone. You see, I'm a chatterbox. You barely even talk. Like, I'm a chatterbox. <laughs> so we get on the phone and I'm like, yeah. blah, 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 blah. I'm going to send you my music. Bro, he listens to one song. One song. Shout out, Connor. You a real one. He listens to one song, he calls me back, and he tells me something that he's a stranger. Yeah. And there's people I've been on in this rap game for like fucking 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. A stranger listened to one song, he called me back, and he said, bro, I want to shoot all your videos. I want to shoot all your videos. And I said, hey, bro, like, I don't I don't know what the ticket is on a video. Like, I ain't trying to shit, like, step on nobody's toes or nothing, but you're anywhere from like two to eight hundred dollars you know what i'm saying somewhere in that range like whenever you're paying for music videos mm -hmm. that i know of you, yeah. they could go all the way up to two three bands you know what oh, i'm saying yeah. like but for like most you know what i'm saying the range is like two eight hundred dollars and i record a lot like a lot a lot so when he told me like bro i'll shoot your videos it's a collaborative project just put my name out there cross promote help me get out there and like I, you know you could use my connects i could use yours type bro like I ain't gonna lie, damn, they started tearing up because I was like, this is all I ever wanted. I always, I just wanted my chance. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I used to sit in the room and wonder, like, am I good enough? Am I, like, are my bars hard enough? Is my delivery on point enough to where I could, I could go with the niggas on the radio? Yeah. I could go with the motherfuckers on YouTube. 
And like now, not for nothing, and I'll gladly probably say looking in the camera, now it's the other way around. I feel like can they deal with me? Can yeah. they bang with me? You know what I'm saying? Something I've done that like I stopped doing it because it made me feel like an asshole. Um, I would do a show and like before I did my show, I would bring four songs. They tell me you can do three songs. I'll bring four. And I would grab and I I didn't have a lot of money, but at the time it'd be like hundred dollars. At least that looks like, you know what I'm saying, enticing. I would grab a hundred dollars before my set. And I would go up there and be like, hold on, DJ. And be like, look, I got $100. I got three songs to do. I'm going to do two songs. And if by the end of the second song, anybody in this building feels like they could fuck with me bar for bar, I won't do the third song and we'll play an instrumental that I brought. And we'll let the crowd pick. We'll let the crowd pick who won harder, harder, bar for bar. Mm. And so I would do my set. By the time I would literally see people looking around like, bro, you're about to get that nigga. You about, it's going to be you. Yeah. It's going to be you. And by the time the second song, to like, and I'm not again, I'm not, I'm not nobody. I've done it a few times. Nobody's come to the stage. Mm. Yeah, everybody wants to freestyle with you until you're like put some money on it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but one thing I noticed, and this is why I'm gonna stop doing it, is whenever I would do my show and get off stage, the reception from people were like, "Bro, what's up, dog? Like, hey, what's your name, bro? Where can I find your music? I thought that was cool. That was dope." But whenever I would do this, like waving the money and like, you know what I'm saying, being like conceited, big headed and like basically like rubbing their face in it, mm. it was like I came off like arrogant. I came off like cocky. Yeah. And like I worry about my image because I'm the son, I'm the son of a landscaper, I'm the son of a maid. Yeah. So fuck all this music shit. Like you need to know that I was taught my my mind your manners. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So so I don't do it no more. But just to be like real clear about it, like um, I put 25 years into that pen and pad. So, yeah, yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I don't pay my dues to jump in front of this camera and any other camera and be like across the country. If you feel like you can fuck with me, come get it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I've yeah. been dying to give it to somebody, bro. Like I got I got three verses that are right here. Yeah. And I'm like, bitch, I dare you. <laughs> like, nigga, I've been waiting that you give it to somebody. Hey, why don't you give it to the camera, dude? Ah, uh, nah, hell nah, cause, cause <laughs> they, you know what? Cause when I tell you, like, like I, I told you, I was born in New Jersey, right? Yeah. So like the battle raps, like I love battle rapping, yeah. like I, like me myself, I don't consider myself a battle rapper, but I love watching battle rap. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I love how like the delivery, the. Yeah. Grrr, grrr. So we were just talking like off camera. We were like, hey, you know, I got the that segment, the brainasium. Oh yeah, well I do some shit a cappella right now. Shit, hell yeah. Well we we'll go ahead and uh, throw in the the beat. Yeah, you, you know, do you whatever can, you want. Let's run it. Shit, man, I'm all for on. that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like what I tell people all the time is, you gotta be competitive, bro. Like, if you play basketball and I play basketball and he plays basketball, yeah, run that. We gotta, we gotta play basketball. Ain't nobody gonna go home tripping like, bro, you dunked on me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh hell yeah, shit, that's loud as that goes right there. Hey, so we got the Brainasia, man. We got E45. Hey, let me give them two different speeds with it. You know what I'm right, saying? Cause we can him, shift gears. We can yeah. shift gears over here. Check it out. Hey, E45. Hey, turn that up a little bit. Hey, you want the you want the fast version or the slow version? Hey. You want the you hey? You know what? We in Texas. We are gonna yeah, get a slow one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hold up, hold up. I be having niggas call my phone like you know my bitch. So this is for you. <laughs> Check it out. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. You got me fucked up, hoe, you're talking all wrong. You really got fixed and get the fuck off my phone. I'm the type of nigga you gotta come see in person. Oh, I'm riding dirty and I'm gambling if they search it. Better make it worth it when I pull up to a lick. I do that shit on purpose when I pull a nigga's bitch. And I ain't a hoe, I ain't taking disrespect. We boxing or we blessing, how real you wanna get? I'm all in for mine, what the fuck you wanna bet? My 40 cow hungry, I'll feed that hoe your neck. Whole niggas look scared, I'm the pit bull they brung out. I really got the look of somebody pull a gun. Out. Up close with a pump, leave you flat with your lungs out H-Town text what these bitch niggas know mm. about Bagging up work, trying to dodge one time Chris in the pen with real killers in the lunch line Kidnap murder, I meant the real, it ain't a punchline Swimming with the sharks, if I get jammed, I'ma bust mine Fly around with toes for him, whip when we touch down Niggas no rules, when we ride, I give a fuck now Busting out the window, if it ain't with you, partner, duck down Hit the block and come back, revolver, pull my thumb back Don't talk about some street shit, if you ain't never done that If you run up, then run back, murder game we run that the hole in his head, nigga. The size of a thumbtack. Run my name from north side of 43rd. From the pills to the surf, a phone call to get you served. Cows get what they deserve, but don't work my last nerve, nigga. Hold up. 
Hold up, nigga, hold up. I, I, I ain't used to wearing these tight ass shirts. No, no, no. I, I ain't used to wearing these tight ass shirts. I'm used to bouncing around in this hole. Let me get loose. Hey, listen. I know I get it, I don't care who looking, go chain with a pistol, I know I'm quick If I see them lights, nigga, got a book, it try jack me, kill will, but took it. If I show up, I'm hopping out, dead in your face, what you talking about? I'll stab in the leg, let you walk it out, if we go to war, can't talk it out Ass go toes, it's black and brown, I beat your ass, I ain't backing down I ain't learn my lesson, I'm still plexing, banging hard for Houston ticks If I said it once, I won't say it twice, dodging loud, playing with my life Like Kane's cousin, right at the light, take what you got, then I'm at a sight What's the deal to Northern Cali, 100 pounds on the black Denali You a click hoe, this a family, you got plicks, then broke it at me Get it on, no time to bump, host fucked up and got me crunk Kick those jack and pump on the first old fraud, try to pull the stunt. Got my orders and service notice. Bought a skill and then broke a quarter. Homeboy gone, he blowing water. You die slow, so we call it slaughter. Talk about it, I be about it. Violent crimes have me surrounded. Have me music, read about it. I die for them, bitch, bleed about it. H time, 713. All my boys throwing stars out. Black out like I'm barred out. Pay attention while I call out. If it's off the head, I'm going all out. Raised on screwing T Ferris. 43rd in Palm Terrace. I reckon I like a rig before. Lil Chris in that second water. I don't buy plicks. I start a war. One pop trunk and a slab with bang. Drinking drunk, nigga, that's my thing. Hold on, let me get my moment. I'm chromed out with the grilling woman. Trunk coming so they hear me coming. I don't got ass. She show me something, put on a show and I throw you some. See how I do when I twist these words. Picture me selling pills and syrup on Broadway. That's C Wall. It's recon, we call it re-raw. She bounced that ass like a seesaw. Now pick it up and then throw it back. Life's a movie, shout out the stacks. Showing screens in the fifth relax. Hundred racks in the damn leg. Yes, yeah, certainly I'm speaking facts. Gay to seeds, chrome front to back. If you slab hard, then you got cost. Purple drinking them yellow bars. Bad bitches coming out, they draws. Blowing smoke while she work them jaws. Catching game for that nigga sauce. Texas raised, Texas made. H time with a ball fade. Do some trades, exotic case. Hustle, baby, do whatever pace. Keep it tough, getting sprayed. When you talk to me, better watch your base. Make it clear, I don't like you hoes Now you hear why the game get told Don't get so till my nigga froze Know the Kelly, shout out to toes I call niggas out and bitch, here we go Ho ass niggas talk this and that After I dig it down, see a bitch come back So it's time to the fifth relax Thirty is special when I click it back Apply pressure, we send it back Youngs on the black tryna get my rack Box of blast, tryna take my pack Boss nigga with a bitch to match Life's a bitch, but you got me spoiled Catching paper on purple law Cooling kit with no record Pimp the pen just cause I'm bored Free little crystal on up the wall This a machete, it's not a sword Why I mask y'all hit the floor Pull these niggas like I did before I don't give a fuck, they bob their head Real hood niggas respect what I said Catch the fake nigga, fuck the lid. When the draw taken to the head? H time all the way to Kelly. Think you got me? Then come get at me. I'm racked up and it's fuck your life. That's how I feel if you're mad at me. Woo! Nigga, what? H town, bitch. Hell. Nigga, this shit is mine. Fuck. You know what? It's not just H time. It's the whole fucking state. It's the whole country, nigga. If you want bars, I'll serve you, bitch ass nigga. Like a D boy on his grind. I'll serve whoever pulls up, nigga. What? I don't give a fuck who want it, nigga. I'm standing on my shit. We could put bread on it, nigga. Fuck bread. We could put respect on this shit. And on everything I love, for every homeboy that got me here, nigga, I'm gonna put it down for the click, nigga. You gotta deal with me now, nigga. I don't give a fuck about your streams. I don't give a fuck about your views. I don't give a fuck about the record label that got you bitch ass niggas pumped up. You gotta deal with me now, nigga. Every time, every show I pull up at, I don't give a fuck who's headlining that bitch. You gotta deal with me, nigga. E45, bitch. Mm. There you have it. There you have it. Man, somebody get a fire extinguisher. Respectfully, man. my bad. That, that mic over there on fire right now. Respectfully. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Already, man. That was just dope, man. Uh appreciate that you jumping on that brainasium, bro. Hey, bro. I had, yeah. Like, I like Hannah God, like, I mean this. I could freestyle. I could freestyle, right? Yeah. But just like, just like when I walked in, this is y'all's office. You're in inter- like how you want your business to look, right? Yeah. I could freestyle and be like, oh, old boy sitting behind the screen and this thing and da 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 right? Yeah. But I want my bars to be showcased the way that I want them. Yeah. So like the verse right now, a lot of people they they've been like, oh bro, I heard you say that before. Yeah, but this is the way I want my music put out for my homeboys, from for my family, for myself. This is my interpretation of my music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody out there is like, oh, bro, that wasn't freestyle. Okay, well, put up $500. Come meet me at any club you want. And we could freestyle all you want. Mm. Put up a shut up. Shit, put your money where your mouth is. Let's run it. Oh, and we could shake hands afterwards. Cause like I said, if we all play basketball, nobody's going to go home talking about, I'm going to kill that nigga. He dunked on me. It's, you know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? It's like, if we all, if we, it's just it's just in me to be like, bro, look, I'm humble as fuck. Like I said, my mom was a maid. My dad was a landscaper. My father, he's a minister. I love you. You know, I yeah. pray to God every day. Uh, but I put my time in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can't claim something that doesn't claim you. Yeah. And so I can't claim to be the hardest without there being a group of people walking around talking about fuck with my nigga E and see what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can't claim something that doesn't claim you. You can't claim to be a balling ass nigga if you ain't got money. Yeah. You can't learn to get money from somebody who's broke. And there's always somebody that's broke that's like, bro, you should have done this. You should have done that. You could have, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you feel me? Yeah, I so, you. so, so, man, uh, thank you so much for having me on here, bro. Like, I love Dallas. When I say I love Dallas, I, I want to be... 
I want to be that pillar. Yeah. I, I want to be that person that's like, look, if I could get Salvadorans and Mexicans to listen to my music mm. and be like, it doesn't matter that he's Salvadoran. It doesn't matter he was raised Mexican. Well, it's know. Spanish and it goes hard. You know what I'm saying? That's the same way I want it to be across the board. Yeah. I want I want to be accepted in Dallas, but not because like I came out here with my chest poked out. I want to be accepted by Dallas because I came out here and respected the 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 Dallas life, the Dallas culture, and it embraced me the same way I embraced it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I want the same thing in San Antonio. I want the same thing in Odessa. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally went from the living room of my house trying to figure out how to get in contact with these people to now flying all over the country yeah. from Colorado to California, New York. And everywhere I go, it's not so much like H-Town, I love you, I love you. But it's like... In Houston, if you want to get accepted, you got to go get hot somewhere else. Yeah, They have to accept you somewhere else before you come back over here and we accept you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm all for it. You know, some people, they're like, oh, that's fucked up. Houston fucked up because it's like that. But I'm like, you know what? That's Houston. That, that That's yeah. what it is. Hey, you know what? I don't think it's just Houston, man. It's, I think it's, it's Texas. Because I always tell people, they always tell me, it's like, say, man, you've been in the, in the music scene out here in D-Town. He's like, what would be some good advice you would give somebody? Yeah. And I would say the same thing. Get out of Dallas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect. Yeah. You nah, know what I mean? None I, ain't at all. I ain't never trying to disrespect Texas. You none know what I mean? All. You know, the state, you know, city of Dallas, you know, that raised me. You know what I'm saying? You know what's crazy? I literally just earlier today went on my live and, and I put on there, like, my mom, she told me the story about, like, the smartest minds in the world. Mm. They took months to come up with a statement to put it in the king's, in, in his ring. And it literally said, this shall pass. All the smartest minds in the in the world, they all came to this shall pass. So earlier I was thinking about it and I was like, well, if I had to sum it up, and it's not that I've had like like a, a luxurious career, like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like I've yeah. been all over the world, but just with what I've learned from music, like what would I put it into one statement? And so I thought about that and I was like, you know what, the best statement that I could put it under is that it's 90% fake and 10% real. And if you find a way to navigate and stay within the 10%, you never have to fuck with the 90% to make it. Because that 90%, they're trying to sound like you. They're trying to look like you. They're trying to think like you. They're trying to imitate you because they're not you. Yeah. Because they're threatened by what they can't be. So whether it's rapping, whether you're a plumber, whether you're an electrician, most of most things in life are gonna be ninety percent fake, ten percent real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're still that little kid that's watching wrestling and you believe that you know, the Undertaker got hit in the chair, got hit in the head with a fucking chair, and the next night he's fighting and getting hit with it, you know what I'm saying? If that's your train of thought, that's cool. But at some point you grow up and you figure out it's entertainment. It's entertainment. Yeah. So like, if you hear me say on a song, uh, V12, I want it off the lot. Be honest with you, I never even sat in a V12 Mercedes Benz. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 if you hear me say, oh, you know, I got I got iced out. Like this chain right here, mm -hmm. shout out to H-Town Drip. It was part of the package. So again, uh, the haircut, getting this interview, getting the chain, it was all part of the package. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm not one of those people that's like, fake it till you make it. Like, I don't really believe in that. But I wear this chain with pride because it's like, I wrapped a lot of people to put this on. You know what I'm saying? So like, I wear it like, hey, you know, I want it. Yeah. Um, but huge shout out to like everybody that like has a plan and you know what I'm saying like to to do something with your life. Just you know what I'm saying, dream big, dream as big as you fucking can. Yeah. Don't let nobody you know what I'm saying like put a ceiling or a cap to what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying and and Hannah God, I heard that love man. I want everybody to follow me on on Facebook, Elias Benitez. I want uh on IG E45 underscore Benitez. And on my YouTube channel is uh, E45's Bullies and Bud. It's about my dogs and about Bud. So it's yeah. like I have Stizzy's, Jungle Boys, uh, Shout Out Cookies, Cannibalism Products. So I, all these companies that know that like I promote like you know healthy, clean, smoke music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, they're showing me love. Like, like, and, and see, like, I don't. I'm proud of it, bro. Cause it's like if you put 25 years in this, hypothetically, hypothetically, yeah. you had a kid 25 years ago, and and your kid right now is like graduating, being a doctor mm. or a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? How proud would you be? Shit, you gotta be proud. Bro, like, and this this kid, like, it was born in the hallways of Central Middle School 20 something years ago, wanting to sound and wanting to be accepted and wanting to get recognized. Yeah. And like, so from then to here, it's been a blessing. 
everybody I've met along the way. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. I sell raffle tickets. I, I like I, I, my dogs. Mm. I sell raffle tickets right now. I'm doing a raffle where it's ten dollars. I try to make it affordable because not everybody has thousands, thousands of dollars to put in a dog. So for ten dollars, you could win a dog, right? Mm. But even if you don't win by buying the ten dollar raffle ticket, you're invited to my personal private event. We're gonna have singers, uh, rappers. Uh, co-headliners we're gonna have comedians we're gonna have a dj we're gonna have a a, a dance floor we're gonna have we're gonna be catering fajita rice yeah. potato salad um and so if you play the raffle you're automatically you have admission into this event mm. so it's like even if you don't win the dog come out and have a good time yeah. like come out and have you know i'm all about mm -hmm. good vibes you know what i'm saying everybody leave all the dumb shit at home yeah like all my homeboys know like look i take my music very very serious so if, if you have to turn it into something different just don't come yeah you know i'll come kick it with you after or before you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but leave all that at home you know Already. like nine times out of ten i bring my kids to my shows my kids are at my events. Yeah. That should say enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, if my children are here, like, respect the fact that I'm trying to get them home. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm not man. trying to get handcuffed in front of them. I'm not yeah. trying to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's crazy that a lot of people, that they're like animals, like savages. Yeah. But me and them have, like, a relationship where, like, I've never had a problem with you. Yeah. You know, like, but this motherfucker probably beat up everybody on TikTok <laughs> and Instagram. Yeah. But, like, if I don't have a problem with you, we're good. We're yeah. straight. And it's those people that want me to win the most. That's why it's so important to me to bring them up the most. Yeah. Even if I don't say their names, they have to know, like, hey, bitch, you sitting right here with me. Already. You know what I'm saying? So uh, shout out to Elm Street. Shout out to Big Boss. Shout out to Big Boy. Uh, Wavy Celine, Yazzie Nicole, the whole uh, Traviesa, the whole Big Boss family. I fuck with them because his plan is different. Yeah. Like, I've never seen a record label in Texas go to every major city and sign the hottest artist. Yeah. And Raul did that. He went to Houston, got the hottest. He in San Antonio, Dallas. So now he's like the Yankees. He like, he just has somebody yeah, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So big shout out to them. Their shout studio. Shout out to Big Boss. Yeah, man. Shout out to uh, Tex. Infamous text. Infamous text. From my Hustle Town Network. What's up, boy? It's my boy right there, man. Shout out to him, man. And uh, hey, man, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming through, man. man it's all love. I'm a big believer that things happen for a reason. And, you know, you was meant to uh, win that competition. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're here, man. So, uh, hey, my bad if I didn't like get you, like, you didn't get to talk that much. I, like, I've nah, been, hey. earlier, didn't I tell you? I was like, how much time do I got? Same. Because I need to, like, da -da 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 -da. Hey, no, but, the, you know, the show's not about me. It's about, you know, my guests. Hey, and I just want to put so. it, uh, I just want, this is officially, like, the first time I'm, I'm announcing it. Um, I'll be starting my own podcast in Houston, The All Ring right. of Fire. We're going to have, like, a live podcast that you could pull up to. Anybody, right. Everybody's invited to it. Yeah. BYOB, you know what I'm saying? It's good vibes, you feel me? Yeah. Um, and if you're ever in the age... I want you to be my special guest. I, I want you to come through. And the same way you gave me this blessing, it might not be as nice and fancy, you know what I'm saying, as so it. Good, bro. But I, I I believe in like I believe in sharing your blessing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so if, if I could cross promote, if I could help you shout anything oh, out yeah, whenever yeah. you come to the city, it's open arms. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to in no type of way, I'm not trying to make myself sound like some big ass nigga in H Town, yeah, like, hey bro, yeah. I got you. But like, you know what I'm saying? Whenever you come to H Town, me and my people, which you know who you are, nigga, like um, bro, we, we want to show you around, make sure you have a good time. Here we come. Welcome yeah. down. She's in H Town. Man, yeah, hold up. So shout out to, like I said, shout out to everybody in Dallas that that show me love. Yeah. Uh, man, I love it out here. Shout out to Nubias, y'all. Please go check that out. Really good food. Uh, the barbershop, I'm gonna find that out. I'm gonna put it all over my social media yeah, as yeah. I get that. Cause old boy got down, bro. Like <laughs> yeah. when I say he got down, he got down. That's what's up. Um, man. And bro, like uh, if you can make it to the show, if not, I'll be. Uh, I talked to Nubias, and where I won the SOT contest, yeah. she's gonna let me throw another event. Okay. So that whole the, the idea I just told you, I'm doing Houston about mm. the dog. I'm in the works of doing that in Dallas, in Dallas. where I'm going to get rid of a puppy here in Dallas. Someone in Dallas is going to win this puppy at the show. And everybody that doesn't win is going to be able to attend the show with like, I want to get like the money that I make from this show. Yeah. I want to pay local artists. Yeah. Like I want to flip the scale. Yeah. Like you're a local artist. You want to rap. You got to pay the promoter for the slot. I want to make money from this event and handpick who I invite and pay them for coming out. Because right. I've been on their end. I've paid the gasoline to get to the venue. I paid for the food because I got hungry. I yeah. paid for the drinks to support the venue. And at the end of the day, still have to pay to get on stage. Yeah. So 
at, at this event, it's not so much like God's blessed me, and I'm not I'm not some balling ass dude, you know, like millionaire nothing like yeah. that. But He's blessed me to where I can share my blessing a little bit. Yeah. So whenever that event comes around, for sure, shout out to Capo, shout out to Joker, shout out to even Tex. I yeah. met Tex, Joker, and Capo all at the same time, 15 years ago. Wow. Remember I told you I put yeah. it down for 10 years. For those 10 years, they all kept rapping. And I'll be damned if Capo isn't one of the hardest lyricists in Houston. Yeah. Joker, that's a household name. Everybody knows who he is in Houston. And then Tex, well, he got involved with 97 on the box in Hustletown. Yeah. And so like everybody that was in that parking lot kept doing their thing. And I'm like dead ass proud of them. And the fact that like I didn't fuck with it for 10 years. I didn't record a song. Yeah. I didn't 10 years. And my kids, it was they, it was their idea to get a studio book. And so Gordo, Nico, Lina, Lexi, I love y'all. They, they, they got a session for me to go record. And I shit you not, it was four songs that I recorded and I never planned on going back. It was yeah. like, hey, look, they're just like like visiting. Like, like I ain't trying to be graphical, but like going back to your first love for that one night. And it's yeah. like, you need to go back to your wife, husband and kids. Like that type of shit. It was like, yeah. I, like wow. And I'll be damned if one of the songs I didn't record was HTX. And that was the song that got me with Gold Toes, yeah. and that's what got me all over the country. So originally, it was my it was my children. They were like, "We've heard your songs from ten years ago. We know all the words. Yeah. Like, go record one of those songs you keep like singing in the living room." Yeah. And it was their idea, and I recorded HTX. Lucky gave it to Gold Toes, and I'm sitting in front of you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, shit, man. Like I said, thanks again, man, for coming through, man. Show me some love, man. And you know, y'all go check out my boy E45. Represent the H Town, man. H -town. Like I tell you, man, keep your ears to the streets and I catch you on the block. I'm your boy, Money Elms, man. Peace.